In all disasters, whether it's natural disasters or man-made disasters, farmers have typically been the first to respond. They responded with their lives, with their livelihoods, with their farms, with their land, with the products of their land. We've always considered farmers as first responders. We just hope that there's a push for our government and everybody else to recognize them as such. The Federation of Southern Cooperatives is a cooperative association of black farmers, landowners, and cooperatives all around the South. The Federation came directly out of the Civil Rights Movement, founded uh, 53 years ago in 1967. 1967 was an interesting time for the Federation of Southern Cooperatives. Many of the individuals who founded the Federation were just coming out of the Civil Rights Movement where uh, they had gained some social and political freedoms and of course the right to vote. But what these um, leaders realized was having the social or the political rights without any way to sustain those rights was not a sustainable path. And so they sought out to build communities that would own their own land and resources and be able to build assets. The Federation is one of those organizations that grew out of necessity. It was founded by 22 cooperatives from all around the South. The purpose of the organization, the mission, the vision have been the same since its inception. What we focus on are three things, cooperative economic development, land retention, and advocacy. A co-op is a form of economic organization. It's, it's a form of, of doing business. The benefits that are created are shared. So it's not just one voice, one farmer crying out for help or needing help or becoming self-sufficient, but it's about a group working together to get resources to um, spread throughout the community. Black farmers and landowners have faced a well-documented history of systemic racism um, at the hands of the United States Department of Agriculture. I think the role of community-based organizations like the Federation is to hold them accountable and ensure that they have a level playing field that represents a diverse and equitable food system. Our journey for social justice has always included protest, and it allows us to bring a social consciousness to America. My predecessor, uh, Ralph Page, uh, was a big impetus for the Black Farmers Caravan to Washington. The caravan was really to go to uh, talk about discrimination at USDA. In 1992, we traveled throughout the South uh, up to Washington, D.C., but we had events in almost every state capital on the way up. When we got to Washington, we first were demonstrating on the steps of the Capitol. I gave Leo $50, and I said, go drive 30, 40 miles outside of Washington in any direction you want and find a pig, because when we demonstrate there, I think we should have something that symbolizes that we are farmers and we are here in Washington. We actually marched from the Capitol down to USDA, and they, and they had armed guards because they thought we were going to break into their building with our pig. Like many things, results are not always seen immediately. There was a year's worth of struggle, but that caravan shed a light and eventually led to Black Farmer lawsuit, Pickford versus Glickman. It was the largest class action lawsuit ever filed against the U.S. government. So in that sense, it was just hugely significant, more than a billion dollars has gone out to the black community thanks to this lawsuit. What, what was really central to understanding is the black community was taking the lead for justice because there was a black farmer lawsuit, but then the uh, Latino farmers filed a lawsuit against the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And women also filed suit against the U.S. Department of Agriculture. So the black community took the lead in this, which 
is true really in most of the justice movements in the United States is that the black community takes the lead and other people follow. Black farmers, they've been going through a lot in this country and there have been various movements to address that. I'm optimistic uh, that things are starting to change, especially with the latest movement, with this Black Lives Matter movement. I am very inspired by the Black Lives Matter protest. I commend the Black Lives Movement for leading the change they wanted to see. For the first time, I think in my lifetime, I've seen a real like outpouring of support for black farmers and organizations that rally behind black farmers and landowners. It's unfortunate that we are still fighting some of the same battles um, and some of the challenges that they dealt with during the civil rights movement. But I am so grateful to the work of our civil rights heroes, John Lewis and C.T. Vivian, for just like laying the blueprint and really showing us how to make demands and get what you want accomplished. These folks were part of the civil rights movement. These folks were part of the, the black cooperative movement, the land movement. These folks were honorees of the Federation. Reverend C.T. Vivian, the late great John Lewis, Joseph Lowry. So all those folks who have served the mo movement and who continue to serve the movement have inspired me. Looking to the future, I think we want to continue to provide services and assistance to our members and their cooperatives. We want to continue to advocate for rural public policy changes and other public policy changes that will help our members. And we want to continue to find resources, both from the government and from supportive individuals that will help us go forward. Before the Federation started to focus on federal legislation, we were leading state efforts to create state laws to protect heirs property owners from uh, what basically amounted to legal thievery. The Uniform Partition of Heirs Property Act was drafted as an answer to decelerate some of that land loss. And we worked with several organizations to um, write that legislation and to propose that legislation and it has now been passed in 17 states. The patience and persistence of the leadership of our organization has positioned us to be one of the lead organizations to promote the advocacy for changes um, to save black owned land. In 1910 there were 218,000 black farmers who owned roughly 15 million acres of land. Uh, but before the turn of the century, according to like the 1992 census, there were only 18,000 black farmers on a little bit over 2 million acres of land. A lot of young people are just not aware that this is something that is affecting black landowners. So it's really important for us to reconnect. This is the stage that you want to harvest tomatoes. Even right. if we aren't heirs to land, just being able to raise awareness and make sure that the message is amplified that black landowners are valuable and the land is valuable. Land is the basis of all wealth. The challenge is really trying to make sure that we protect land, that we save it, that we have a vehicle for folks to always pass their land along and then get young folks in it. How do we really make sure there's true equity? And for us as a federation, our focus has always been on cooperatives, and cooperatives is about ownership. It's about organizations, and it's about infrastructure, and those are the cornerstones of equity.